Can you talk a little bit about how you came to be an artist? Well, I mean, I can talk about it, but... I mean, when I was a little kid, I used to like to draw pictures. So when I was like four, I was always an independent kid. I used to like to sit on the floor and play with my toys. You know? And a lot of the toys that I played with were, um, you know, little, little cowboys and Indians and stuff. But some of the other stuff I used to do was uh, collect baseball cards. I was really into it. Like my brother tells stories that I used to like at five. I used to go um, to train like for Mickey Mantle 52 or something like. I would go to old parts unknown in the neighborhood by myself and make deals, you know. So I used to hear stories. I don't know if I remember any of that, but I do remember collecting baseball cards. And I remember having this talk with Ken Nolan one time. Um, what I used to do, I used to collect comic books and baseball cards. And when and when I was alone, and maybe I was, <clears throat> maybe I was like at this point like eight or nine, something like that. I wasn't just five. Uh, maybe I was ten. But what I used to do is I used to spread the baseball cards out on the floor, and then climb up on top of uh, this dresser in my in my parents' house and stare and squint at the cards because I really used to get off visually on the cards just the way they looked so I mentioned that to Nolan and, I, and you know the 1952 Topps cards a lot of those cards as an aside have colored bands on the bottom I think 52 Topps I haven't seen a 52 Topps in a while but a lot of those baseball cards have borders and bands so I mentioned that to Nolan, and he said, oh, yeah, Ronnie, I was, in, I was always influenced by the 1930s cards that he had as a kid. So, you know, they, they're very designy. They're very, like, the ones he, I think he had, um, I forget what they're called, yellow backs and, I mean, yellow fronts, you know, so. <clears throat> so I was always visual, and I used to do the same thing with the comics I collected. I used to like get up there and kind of squint at them. And I used to want to, initially, I wanted to be a cartoonist. Or I used to like to draw, primarily. Occasionally, I would, you know, not get along with my friends. They like, I'd want to like play punch ball and they'd want to play stick ball or something, vice versa. And so I'd get pissed and I'd split and I'd go home. And I drew. It was a way for me to just do what I wanted to do. So I was kind of, I, I, I was always like that. I was perfectly happy to be uh, independent of groups and other people. But at the same time, I also wanted to be liked, and I wanted people to like me, and I wanted to have friends. And, um,. But at the same time, I wasn't that. I, I was also uh, a bit of a wise guy, and I used to um, be appalled at anything that uh, approached conformity. And so that all led up to um, me hanging out again with my cousin Elliot and his brother on the other side of the zoo. Uh, only this time, I, I had already met Castro, and I was a little older, and I idolized at that moment my cousin Marty, who was Elliot's older brother. He was 11 years older than me, and he was a commercial artist. And he used to draw, and, and he taught me how to draw horses, and he t taught me how to draw palm trees, and so I used to like to draw palm trees and horses and guns. and faces, and uh, I wanted to be him. I wanted to be a commercial artist. And so when it came time to go to high school, and I grew up in the Bronx, all of my friends were going to go to the local high school, Christopher Columbus. 
and Christopher Columbus, uh, to speak of its virtues, had a great basketball team. One of the better basketball teams in the Bronx. But I was too short to play basketball, so it was like meaningless to me. Um, couldn't care less about basketball. Basketball. So I wanted to try out for the art schools because I didn't want to go to Columbus. And my brother went to Bronx Science. And my cousin Elliot went to Bronx Science. So I tried out for Bronx Science, which I didn't get into. And I tried out for Music and Art, which was in those days what is now LaGuardia High School. And I tried out for uh, Art and Design, which in those days was called Industrial Arts. So I tried out for the High School of Industrial Arts, High School of Music and Art, and I got into both places. My first choice was to go to Industrial Arts High School to learn how to be a commercial artist or a cartoonist. And my parents didn't want me to go. They wanted me to go to Music and Art. And the differences between the two was music and art, which even now focuses more on college and, it, and the curriculum, and it fo focuses more on fine art and uh, culture, whereas art and design, the curriculum is not college, except they have a college course that you could, you could take, and the focus is on getting a job in the arts, in the, in the commercial art universe. And I told my parents that I wanted to get a job in the commercial art universe, but I would take the college course. So I made a deal with them. And so they allowed me to go to what then became art and design. I was the first year of art and design. I had took, took the test at Industrial Arts, and that school was on 79th Street. But the year that I started in 1960, I was 13 years old, was the first year of the new building on 57th Street and 2nd Avenue. And I started there, and the first day, I'm sitting next to this kid. His name was Lloyd. And the, the goal was to draw a cup of coffee. And Lloyd's drawing, I'm looking over his shoulder, huh? he's drawing a cup of coffee, and you can pick it up and drink it. My cup of coffee is all smudged and smeared, and it, it's, it's artistic and whatever it is. And I'm looking at Lloyd, and I'm thinking, oh my God, I can't do that. I don't want to do that. It's not a drawing. It's, it's like a reproduction. You get a camera, take a photograph. And there were a lot of unbelievably talented kids in that school. And what I learned within the first, let's say, six months, was that I really didn't want to be a commercial artist. I really didn't want to be a cartoonist. What I really wanted to be, I discovered, was a painter. And I found myself in painter paradise. I would leave school at three o'clock, and there I was on 57th Street, which was ground zero for the art world in those days. There was no Soho, there was no Chelsea, there were no, no, no galleries in Brooklyn. Ground zero was 57th Street and Madison Avenue. So every day I'd leave, I'd, I'd wander into the Museum of Modern Art, 53rd Street, I saw the Gorky retrospective, blew me away. I'd go from the Museum of Modern Art on 53rd Street into the Whitney Museum on 54th Street. The two museums were, were connected. Or I would go into the, this is crazy, I used to go into, I used to sneak into, I used to sneak into the Four Seasons because they had this big Picasso tapestry as a high school kid. Or I would go to Nodler Gallery, or Green Gallery, or Janus Gallery, or Tibor Denage, 
or any number or fish back or all of these cowards which were up and down 57th Street. I used to do it every day, uh, Monday through Friday. Um, primarily though, and, you know, I just started, I just started wanting to be an artist. So I, you know, I'd be seeing stuff like um, Hans Hoffman, uh, uh, Giorgio Cavallian, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Ray Parker, um, Rauschenberg, Johns, uh, Pollock, uh, Motherwell, Gottlieb. I used to go to Janice, that was ground zero for the abstract expressionists. Uh, it was amazing. It was utterly amazing. And then I began to make friends with the kids in school, some of whom had discovered the same time that they were misfits. They didn't really want to co become commercial artists, they wanted to become painters or sculptors. So we formed a little group, some of us, and we used to hang out at this gallery that was, you, you'd walk up 2nd Avenue to 60th Street, and uh, I mean, my memory is that it's between 1st and 2nd. I could be wrong, between 2nd and 3rd. And it was <clears throat> this little gallery called the Bodley Gallery. 